Hi, Misha here, and people were asking me about doing a kind of a mag and pouch series, and well, I needed to put a new rack up and move them over, so it seemed like a good time to do it. You guys are going to want some kind of light, aren't you? <sighs> Hang on. Okay, it's probably not a lot better, but you get what you get. Hey, I'm blind. What do I care about light? And where I'm at here, there actually isn't one at the moment. Anyway, I just put a you know, little shelf together here and was arranging my mag pouches on it. These are actually my AK mag pouches and a few other assorted com block styles. And it's just big enough to hold the majority. So yeah, we're gonna go through them and yeah, talk about the different variations and a little bit of the magazines inside them. This is gonna be split into three parts. Part one will be 762 by 39 AK mags. Part two will continue the rest of those plus 545 mags and part three will kind of be the leftovers the 556 mags and kind of the odds and ends the stuff kind of on the top shelf here so yeah we'll get into it and talk about some old surplus pouches and mags good times well of course we have to begin with russia or rather the soviet union here are four pouches. All contain 762 by 39 mags. And on the left here, we have the earliest style, at least that I have. It holds five. It has a large compartment on this side for an oiler, a smaller one up here for the cleaning kit tube. Obviously, if you have a fixed stock gun, you could put the tube in your buttstock, but if you had a folder, you would need to put it in your mag pouch. And we have a, quite a nice heavy-duty shoulder strap and belt loops. This is actually an Egyptian-made three-cell, but this came into use after the five. Here is a later Russian three cell. Has a spot for an oil bottle here, plenty kit here, and again the three mags. No shoulder straps on these. These have belt loops. And then they would kind of compromise going to a four cell. And Russia and Bulgaria made virtually the same pouch. I've seen Bulgarians sold as Russians. I've seen Russians sold as Bulgarians. Doesn't really matter. Different colors, they can range. Over the years, colors kind of shifted more dark green to light green to almost a lime green to kind of the harvest gold. Yes, says the blind guy. Again, belt loops. And this time, we have a combo. One big pouch on the side, and we have stuff going on in here. Now, one thing to note, this pouch only has one button point, meaning it was probably made at a time when they only had 762 by 39. When 545 mags came along, a lot of pouches got two, a longer strap and two button points, holes. So you could either have it big or little, a little bit adjustable. So with that, let's open up and look at the mags inside. So our five cell here actually has a double closure. We have the top, which is more of a belt loop. And then we have this kind of eyelet type closure. So very well secure. And it holds five of the early pattern magazines. These are the so-called slab side. This is the original type of mag used with the AK-47, AK Type 1, 2, 3. And it is heavy. The reason it doesn't have ribs 
It's one millimeter steel, which maybe sounds light. Trust me, it's not. It's very, very heavy. Even unloaded, has a slab floor plate and a blued finish. And these were produced exclusively by Ishesk in the Soviet Union from 1948 until the mid-late 50s. And as far as I know, no foreign nation ever made these, but they of course used them. The side's got a kind of neat button closure here for the bottom pocket. The top's got a similar one. I don't know. I think this is a really cool pouch. But even unloaded, these five mags in here, this is a very heavy rig. And that was kind of the problem. In the 50s, they really started experimenting with lightening the AK and its magazines. It would be until 1959 that the AKM would be formally adopted, although trials began, or at least design plans began, as early as 54, 55. And the same thing would go with magazines. One that you don't encounter too frequently today is the alloy mag, often called the waffle mag. Can't imagine why. Still holding 30 rounds. It's entirely aluminium alloy. Even the floor plate, even the follower. It is extremely lightweight. But you can see there might be problems with these being dinged and dented. However, a number of these do survive today, and they're usually not in terrible shape. By the way, they had kind of a lacquer type finish on them, like a paint style, because, you know, alloy. Couldn't really blue them. Again, only made in Russia, and made relatively, I mean, they made a good number of these, but it was never fully implemented. They went a little too lightweight. And so the compromise, which really was a parallel but competing design, is the one AK Mag that everyone knows because this was produced everywhere. The ribbed mag, this is 0 0.75 stamp steel. So it's right in between the two as far as weight. The ribs are for reinforcing. The back has its uses too, but it's part of the manufacturing process. Originally, these would have been blued, especially when Ishes was making them in the late 50s. Tula would start making these in the around 1960, 61. And soon, just like the AKM, it would go to a, a paint over phosphate type finish. And of course, foreign countries would do them in several different paint styles and uh, types of bluing and even just direct phosphating and there are all kinds of different ones. Now Russian ones were made by Ishesk and Tula and early ones would have been marked on the spine. The last ones were actually marked down here. I just grabbed the Egyptian because they very closely cloned it. But still kind of in a desire for mass production and saving weight and durability. In 1968, the 7.62x39 so-called Bakelite mag was introduced. Made of AG4 material. It's a relatively modern synthetic mix. It does have a steel frame. It does have metal lugs and base plate. And uh, these are made by Ishesk and Tula in Russia. And that's really about it. Uh, foreign nations really didn't make these. China made a fake a light one later, but the true pattern was really only made in Russia, but of course it was exported to uh, other nations. And when I say it, it was only made in Russia, I'm talking specifically about the 7.62 version. Now after this, they would try out doing uh, 762 by 39 mag and the so-called plum in the 80s and it had more of a ribby pattern like the a uh, little bit like this one but it was never mass produced as such at least there's never been any evidence of it so this seems to be the final mass produced version from the Soviet Union and there are several variations of these mags as well Hungarian 
course, Hungary began producing the AK Type 3, it's the AK 55. Earliest ones were 1956, but it would take a few years for them really to circulate. And then we produced the AKM in a modified version, it has the AKM 63. And then there was the really cool, in my opinion, I'm right, but it's cool, <laughs> AMD 65. And these are the pouches for it. <clears throat> Now, originally, they just made 30-round ribbed mags. Now, there is the Hungarian half-moon or man-on-the-moon mags. That just mostly has to do with stamping. But what was unique is they also did a 20-round so-called tanker mag. This wasn't something Russia was really interested in, frankly. So good on Hungary for doing that. So there's two basic sizes of Hungarian pouch. It should be noted that they never manufactured a 545 gun. So they're all for this. The first one here is kind of a general take, but in pleather of the Russian pouch. It holds five mags, has two pockets, one for a cleaning kit and one for an oiler on this side. And this version actually has a large pocket for a grenade launcher for the AMP 69, AMP 69. There's another version of this pouch, a more common one, that uh, just has standard pockets. And of course it does have shoulder strap and uh, belt loops. Neat, but also like the Russian, quite very heavy. And for the 20 round mag, when that was introduced, they went to a smaller pouch because if it's need it's use this holds four has pocket on this side and a pretty generous pocket on this side no shoulder strap but belt loops <clears throat> when they went to canvas versus pleather they kind of kept the same basic design this has a major pocket here, and a long, narrow tool pocket on this side. Buckle still thing. And this one holds five again, and has a shoulder strap. For 20 rounders, they actually reduced it down to a three cellar. And it still has a small pocket on this side and a large pocket for an oiler on this side. And again, belt loop in the back. And finally, we have kind of a lesser common one here. This is a four cell, but for a 30 rounder. So it's actually made very similar to the 20 rounders with a pocket on this side, a pocket on this side. But it does have the shoulder strap, so it's kind of a compromise style. And these aren't all of the variants, but it goes to show you that they had quite a few because they kept the same basic guns in service. Even the AK 63Ds and Fs are pretty much the same. So let's open them up. So the standard 30 rounder, like I said, is pretty much with small variations like the Russian, but the 20 rounder is unique. These can have either a phosphate or a paint over a phosphate type finish. And they have ribs running all the way down to the bottom. If you see ribs stopping with a smooth spot at the bottom, that is most likely a Romanian 20 round tanker mag and you should buy it. They're quite uncommon. What a great mag. One time people didn't want these as much, but now they're getting very desirable. And the patch they come in is pretty neat. Buckle here, we have just two simple flaps. They're not fastened. Come on, don't find me. And it holds the mags in there. Pretty standard. Not really much to say or see inside these, but I wanted to talk about this pouch for a minute because this canvas version actually does have a keeper. And we have a, another little pouch inside. So we have a pouch for a cleaning kit or something in here, an outside pouch, 
another outside pouch for tools. So three pouches and storage for three mags. And I looked in this one, it does not have the internal pouch. Boo. Honestly, to me, the Hungarian pouches are kind of more interesting than Hungarian mags because they're all steel and there are some marking variations. But you know, when you're blind, variations and markings, while I can appreciate uh, in theory how cool they are, when you can't see them for yourself, yeah, you just don't get too excited. And I've been picking up AK mags for so long, and back in the day, no one marked them Bulgarian or Polish or Russian. They just were pre-ban or post-ban 30-round AK mag, and you kind of got what you got. So we ended up getting quite a large mixture. Yugoslavia is kind of the opposite case to Hungary. Hungary has uh, lots of different pouches, but the magazines inside are relatively the same. Well, Yugoslavia had one basic type of pouch, although it of course has many minor variations, but they've had a few interesting mags and features of those mags. Over here we have two older mag pouches. They each hold four mags. This one is kind of smooth-sided. This one has more of a, a border, I guess you would say. It does have a shoulder strap. Only one belt loop, which is kind of interesting. A shoulder, pretty thin shoulder strap. Uh, this one has a thicker shoulder strap. Over here, <clears throat> we have a more modern mag pouch made of more of a, well, modern material. Same pattern, but more of a nylon. This was sold as a Croatian mag pouch, but I can neither confirm nor deny. And this is actually a modern mag pouch here. And it was sold it is a 223 556 pouch. Now, we're not really doing 223 in this video, but since it's so closely related, I thought we would talk about the, the minor differences. And really, that it has just really to do with here. There are these kind of two front pockets. They're really meant for clips or whatever. They're just kind of general pockets in the front. In fact, the whole pouch is kind of a general pouch it's not specific it's very open okay, kind of a weather resistant top four mags in here and in fact the back two mags there's a connector on the top but it actually terminates a little ways down so it's kind of an open back but even here the mags are set very deep kind of just a general purpose not just for an AK perhaps but if you look at the newer one, and this actually has, a, I think it has WBP mags in it. Yeah, doesn't matter about the mags in it. But notice they cut this down to expose more of the mag. That way if you have a shorter mag, easier to pull out. And if you have a taller one, still no harm. So a little change they made to the general structure. But otherwise, and of course the change in the material, they're pretty well the same. But a neat pouch nonetheless. So with that, let's look at the mags. So the Yugo mags are 30 rounds and obviously inspired by the Russian ribbed. But Yugoslavia never had a license to produce an AK. That's why the M64 was quite a departure. The M70 got a little closer, but even then it's it's very unique. So when they design their mag, it's a little bit of a heavier body. The ribs are on the bottom are a little different. It's just different. And then of course several makes and models of these, usually with a blued finish. Of course you have communist era, Zastava, Yugoslavia. You have post-communist, Serbian Yugoslavia. You have Croatian and some other copies and things. And the thing they're really known for is this bolt hold open follower. But it actually began here with the M64 mags. Uh, you can sometimes find mags with this little cutout on the left side there. 
originally there was a bolt hold open device that would pop up there when the mag was empty. That was for the M64. Now afterwards when the M64 was ne never fully put into production or officially adopted, they took a lot of these mag bodies and they just reworked them with the M70 style follower. But you can still find some old cutout mags. So this is a pretty early production mag. Later on they would obviously not need to make that cutout. And some of the newer ones have more of a black paint looking type finish or really dark blue. And uh, they do tend to fit a little snug in non-Yugo guns because they just, they're just a little bit thicker. Like all the Yugo stuff, they're just, they're built beefy. And at one time these mags were very ex expensive. Well, I say very expensive, 20, 30 bucks back when other mags were 10. But in more recent years, we've had quite a few come in, although some of them have been better than others. Another one that was kind of unique for a long time, and now the few have come in, are these Bosnian so-called two-rib mags. Also has a font. Uh, doesn't really have a bolt hold open as such, but it does stick up. It, it kind of acts like a bolt. It's weird. Anyway, it's weird. But the, these Bosnian mags were made in the 90s. It's kind of an ad hoc thing, and there's a lot of mystery sur surrounding them. In fact, we've done a full video just on these. But they're neat, and surprisingly, at least the one or two we tried out at the range worked pretty well. Sometimes they even use a leaf spring versus a standard spring in them. They're pretty wild. But, um, yeah, they're, they're part of that Yugo thing. They're just made cheaper, faster, and less expertly. And these should fit any standard AK more or less. Like I said, there's a little bit of a compatibility. They might fit a little on the tight side. So that's Yugoslavia. And moving into Serbia. Let's move on. China, quite unique and well known for both their pouches and magazines because they did their own thing. Because they didn't produce under license and didn't really give a damn. I have two basic styles here. There are more. This is a five cell. This is this one. With a shoulder strap and belt loops on the back. Kind of a simplified version of the Soviet earlier patterns. Relatively lightweight canvas material. Let's add two of them here. And then, of course, the one that a lot of people are familiar with, the Chinese chest rig. This really is them doing their own thing. I bet you can't guess where this was worn. It holds three magazines up here. And it has a smaller pocket and a medium-sized pocket here and on this side. So four pockets for gear, three pockets for mags, total of seven. And, of course, it has chest straps made of more or less the same material and same thickness as the shoulder pouches and of course it uses the same pattern of closure this is kind of copied from a World War II Soviet way of doing things but theirs were usually made of wood these are made of a synthetic material so now let's talk about Chinese mags the earliest Chinese mags were pretty much exact copies of the Russian. They were even called Sino-Soviet. But they would soon go to the iconic flatback, which a lot of us like because it's more comfortable. And they liked because it was a little bit cheaper, easier to make on their tooling. They also simplified the ribs a bit. And various things changed over time. Here's a similar mag. But notice it doesn't have the uh, kind of step on it there. They did away with it. Physically it's lighter too. Tons of variation in Chinese mags. Because they wanted to mass produce the crap out of them. It's actually where we get to this mag from. This is one that's really cool. This is the all 
stamped mag. Notice this top piece here. And the way the back lug is shaped. These are done for export, really. So that's as cheap as they could make them. When they wanted to do a good job, though, at the same time they were making these, they also made those Polytech mags with those great chrome-lined, chrome-plated followers and even uh, holes in the back for uh, looking at the ammo. I think these have, I know I have some that have the witness holes. Yeah, this one does. Sometimes you see one hole, sometimes three. Okay, here's a... Only has one there. Yeah, here's a one holer. Like I said I didn't pay a whole lot of attention when I was putting these in pouches. As long as they were Chinese, they went in. So yeah, this one has spot welds there. So kind of neat, just uh, variations on a theme. And of course, even though it was not Chinese military, I have to mention the Fakelite mags they made. These are actually a more modern. I'm gonna drop it. More modern polymer than Bakelite. But they knew Americans liked Bakelite, and at the time, hey, you really couldn't get Bakelite sets, so they, they made their own. And I featured this in several videos. This is the one that was donated by Small Arms Solutions a year or two ago, which I'm still very grateful for, because I wanted one to go with the 56-2. While not, strictly speaking, military, it's perfectly good mag. It's just not the same as Russian Bakelites. Chinese stuff is just kind of really cool. Poland. F.B. Radom. Well, at the time, Oxnick. They produced 30 round magazines. Never 20s. Never 40s. And early on, they would be blued. Later, painted. And they more or less stuck with the three cell mag pouch. One interesting feature, it had a slightly oversized compartment on the side here. Not so much for a cleaning kit, although it could hold it, but it had the, it, they had their own oiler. So it usually only had the one pocket. And it would change over time. There'd be different material used for the straps. If you look at Polish slings, it's much the same development now. But that's, uh, that's kind of where they're at on the three cell pouches. And uh, these have been in and out of stock at a lot of places over time. Of course, they started making these when they started making the AK, known as the PMK briefly, then the AK. And they still make them today, and they've evolved the mag quite a bit. Yeah, originally it was a pretty standard, although well-made magazine. Blued, later they could have black paint. In the 90s, the Polish military was taking the last KBK AKMSs. And in the very late time, FB, who had been using polymer mags for other guns like the Tantal, made some of these black mags and they're marked for the caliber and they have a mold number those are kind of amongst the last circle 11 or FB mags now there are these <laughs> that say circle 11 on them do not be fooled this is just a company that essentially bought or was using the trade name. These are not particularly good mags. They're not even fully reinforced. They're pretty lightweight plastic. But they are kind of also rare. If you want a good modern mag, we've had very good luck out of the WBPs. And these are basically an upscaled version of the modern burial mag with the same translucent plastic. They're not reinforced here, but they seem to hold up just fine for the cost. So that's a, that's an option for a good modern mag. Leaving the Polish on the table for a minute, 
because I want to talk about Finland, Valmet, Seiko too, and also Bulgaria because there's a connection here. It's kind of fun. So when Finland was making what would become the RK-62, they didn't have a license to produce, but they did grab various AKs from Russia and also some from Poland. And in particular, it seems like Polish mags influenced Hungary, excuse me, Finnish mags quite a bit. Going on here, which one do I want to take out? Here's a Finnish RK-62 mag. Pretty standard, except it has a handy dandy lanyard loop on the floor plate. Just a little piece on there. So in case you drop it in the snow, they would sometimes also use these to kind of tether them to their packs. Pretty much the same. And their mag pouches are very much inspired by Polish design as well. Three cell with a mag pocket for an oiler. I just think the connection's quite cool. So with that, let's move on to the other connection. Years ago, Numeric e-gun parts had these mags in stock, actually, for quite a long time, and they were a full set. Three magazines in a pouch. These are late Cold War production, 90s production, kind of prototypical RK-95 mags. Of course, they're in green. And this was kind of what Valmet Letter Seiko was working on to update their guns. Steel reinforcements, ridging on the body to make them stronger, and a lanyard loop fixed in the front. Now, ultimately, they would go from green to black and move the lanyard loop, and thus we ended up with the modern RK-95 magazine. I guess that's why these were sold over here is because they were no longer the current mil spec. I would love to have a current modern black one, but they're pretty uncommon here. Now, if that mag looks a little familiar in design, that's because it did influence Bulgaria. Now, here's your more or less common Bulgarian mag pouch. They used and created ones based on the Russian 4-cell. In fact, the line is pretty blurred. I often mix up which one is which, Russian and Bulgarian. But anyway, 4-cells seem to be the very common Bulgarian ones. And here we have the Bulgarian Waffle mag that they began making late 90s, early 2000s. Standard is 30 rounds. And I think you can kind of see the relationship. Metal reinforcement, even a little beefier than this one, because this has a metal floor plate. This is uh, still plastic, but it's often said that they took inspiration from what Finland was doing. And um, yeah, I could I could understand that. And that's kind of the iconic modern Bulgarian magazine. And when you buy pouches from Kvar or Arsenal, that's what they give you are the four cells. And if you look on their website, they tend to sell four cell pouches in military parlance and sell the mags in sets of four. So it seems to be the common thing. But yeah, I just think the connection from Poland to Finland to Bulgaria is kind of neat. Well, I appreciate you tuning in. Hope this was enjoyable. I needed to do this project anyway. So, hey, why not make a couple of videos out of it? Two birds, one stone. And people have been asking me about, uh, about mag pouches. So with that, we are ending part one. We mostly looked at the stuff down here. And part two, we'll kind of move up the rack. If you could, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I actually did put up a extended version a while back for the Patreon supporters. This one's a little bit streamlined, so I didn't want to bore people too very much.
but I do greatly appreciate you tuning in. And yeah, if you'd like to help support the channel, go over and click on the link to the Patreon page. See what's up over there. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.